Berikutnya saya mengundang Yang Mulia Ferdinand Pongpong Rawaldes Marcos Junior Presiden Republik Filipina. Yang Mulia, saya persilahkan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, Your Majesty, Excellencies. I would like to express at the outset my appreciation to the Indonesian government uh, for bringing us to this uh, beautiful place and for the gener generous hospitality extended to the Philippines and its uh, delegation. Also, allow me to take this opportunity to welcome Prime Minister Sonexai Sipandon and Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim, as well as Prime Minister Jose Maria Vasconcelos to our ASEAN Summit. Your Majesty, Excellencies, against the backdrop of complex geopolitical challenges and macroeconomic fragilities, an ASEAN community that plays a central role in shaping the evolving regional architecture, an ASEAN community that is dynamic, innovative, and integrated with the global economy, and an ASEAN community that can realize the full potential for its peoples, is the indispensable bedrock for a peaceful, stable, and resilient region. In order to harness the potential of our region, I believe that ASEAN must now redouble its efforts, in, especially in these following priority areas. First, ASEAN should uphold international law and the international rules-based system, which has, underpinned, uh, which has underpinned the peace, security, stability, and prosperity of our region. As a staunch advocate, of the protection of the rights and welfare of migrants, the Philippines welcomes Indonesia's ASEAN chairmanship priority of strengthening regional cooperation to address cross-border crimes, particularly trafficking in persons caused by the misuse of technology, and to mainstream the protection of migrant workers and their families in crisis situations. Second, ASEAN should demonstrate its commitment to the principle of free trade and to the multilateral trading system. I am pleased to announce that the Philippines has deposited its instrument of ratification for the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, agreement. We are optimistic that RCEP will serve as an engine of growth that will help build more, resi more resilient supply chains and support the integration of are micro, medium, and small-scale uh, establishments into the global economy. ASEAN must strengthen cross-border connectivity and the interoperability of digital frameworks. We must forge a vibrant digital economy and ensure that our people are equipped with the digital skills for the future so that no one is left behind in the midst of our world's digital transformation. We must ensure that our food and energy systems are resilient in the face of the supply and price fluctuations triggered by geopolitical instability and conflict of pandemics, climate change, logistic chain disruptions, and of fuel shortages. The Philippines aims to strengthen food security and production efficiency via the use of new agricultural technologies, upgrading technical and vocational education and training, and adopting climate and disaster resilient technologies. Decades of sustained economic growth and prosperity have resulted in longer lifespans in ASEAN. According to the Asian Development Bank, one out of four people in the Asia-Pacific will be over the age of 60 by the year 2050. I think, therefore, that as it is time that ASEAN should there start discussing the concerns of an aging population consistent with the Asian tradition of valuing our elders. We must view this both as an opportunity and as a challenge especially in terms of adequate social benefits on the one hand and social empowerment on the other. ASEAN goals and work plans should ensure health, health, 
for our elders a safe and dignified and productive life. The Philippines will take bold steps to transition to renewable and alternative energy technologies in a secure and sustainable manner. Recognizing that the cleaner energy future is anchored on the supply of critical minerals, ASEAN should now start enhancing regional cooperation towards boosting the region's strategic industrial metals and minerals value chain. Third, ASEAN must be united in urging developed countries to fulfill their long-standing commitments to the Paris Agreement. Although developing countries such as the Philippines only account for less than 1% of global emissions, our countries bear the brunt of the devastating impacts of climate change. Developed countries have a moral obligation to support adaptation and mitigation efforts through, for the most vulnerable countries through technology transfer, capacity building, and climate financing. This to address loss and damage and to achieve the necessary breakthroughs for climate action at a global scale. The Philippines recognizes that biodiversity can complement and synergize with ASEAN's initiatives in climate change, contributing to our efforts towards a more sustainable and resilient future. The conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity is also an intergenerational responsibility that the Philippines is proud to support through the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity. Your Majesty, Excellencies, as one community, it is imperative that we provide whole of community support to Timor-Leste as it continues its meaningful journey towards full ASEAN membership. Timor-Leste's membership can only strengthen our ASEAN communi community as it expands the reach of ASEAN's united front to face the challenges of the 21st century. As we embark on our vision for a bolder, more decisive, and cohesive ASEAN beyond 2025, let us renew our collective faith in the organization by consolidating our community-building efforts towards an ASEAN that truly matters. Thank you, Mr. Chair.